Hello, uh, this is a video is going to be a video that will help you in getting an understanding of frequency separation. We covered this topic in class, however, there are many that would like to review it and be able to apply it again to some of their photographs. So we're starting off right now looking at a before and after. Here's our before image which I will zoom in some so you can have some detail, get some details. There we go. Okay, now as you can see, she's very, she's photogenic. Um, hair's nice, kind of a little bit in her eyes here, but that's, that's okay. For the moment, that worked for that photograph. However, we do see some spots that could use some, a little bit of help. Right here and here. They don't quite blend together with the uh, shiny spots where the lights that came to her eyes had shined up her forehead and her cheeks and a little bit on the nose. So we would like to blend that together as well. And then we have little spots like this and possibly some down here that could use some help. And we'll go over to our end result and notice that that's for the most part gone here as well. The main idea behind using this is that we do not lose the texture of their skin. So let's look at that's a hundred percent noticed. You can see still see the pores. Yes, she still has those white spots. That's fine. That's normal. It looks like she actually had a light on her face. That's because she did. And then right down here, you see them. And then to her forehead, I could have used a little bit more right there. And we will do that as we go through this from scratch. Notice her eyes, the sharpness. There's that sharpness is still there, even though even though her skin is smoothed out. And if we zoom out, notice another difference between the two. This one, she's wearing a necklace. This one, the necklace has been removed. I am not sure that I will take up the time that's required to show you how to do that as well as it was done. Okay, now let's go ahead and switch over to the original picture. Step one is Command J, and that's to duplicate your layer. Keep this one as is, the one called training, that one is going to be always there for you to go back to your original. And notice this, these little squares over here. Those squares identify that as being an, a vector image. And therefore the duplicate is a vector. We want to rasterize it. We want to make changes. It has to be rasterized. So rasterize layer. I right clicked on it and selected rasterize. So now I want to do Command J again. Now I have my two layers. This will be my high frequency and this will be my low. What I normally name in these is base, it's because it's the base frequency. And this one is the texture. So in order to keep our texture we need we want that on top. The base is where we're going to make some changes. So I'm going to, again, I, I always advise to zoom in so you can see details of what you're making changes to. So this is what our original looks like at 100%. Okay, when you're at this point, you want to select base layer, then turn off the eyeball at the texture layer. So you can see what's going on here. Go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now see how our face has changed. It's all blurred. You say, well, I don't, I don't want that though. Well, there are some things you do want. What we're trying to do is this. Notice that at zero, you have these little red spots that are showing up here and here and here. What we want to do is we want to blend those together. So you drag 
it over until they blend and kind of just blur into one. This layer is not going to be the one that shows, but it does have a major effect because it's this, this is your low frequency and it will have an effect on your final results. So let's go with, the, in this case, I'm going to go with a 4.8. Sometimes I go 4, sometimes 3. It's all dependent on what image you're working on. Hit OK. Now I want to go to texture. And watch what happens when I turn texture on. Looks like we're back in our original picture, which is because we are for the most part. If you're not sure how to move around when you're using Photoshop, hit your space bar and you get this little hand that allows you to drag the image up and down. But it's good to have it close at or at 100% if possible. I have a very large monitor in front of me so I can get the 100% and pretty much all of her skin just a little bit missing. So my next step is being on texture I go over here to image and what I want to do is referred to as apply in the image so I go to apply image when I select it this comes up in my background goes gray well what I want to do is I want to instead of put it on a merged layer I want to put it on the base layer Now you can see her starting to come through. And I want blending to be subtract. Now it's subtract because I've used it recently. It is, the usual is normal. But we want to go to subtract. What it is doing, it is subtracting out some of those things that we did, that we wanted. And giving, see the pores that are showing right here? interface uh, leave scale to 2 and offset to 128 that should never be changed in your opacity 100 so we hit OK well, you're probably asking possibly asking so what do I do with this well what we want to do is be able to see it so we can actually work on it so while you're on texture layer go to this menu item the your blending and you go down and you want to select a linear light and then suddenly she's back and we've got everything back the way it was as I'm moving my mouse across the screen over here to my lasso tool once you have your lasso tool selected you want to make a feathered selection I use 40 pixels uh, 30 or 40 if you're using a full-size raw image I would advise you to stick with 40 that's and on the base layer I will check uh, and, out. and after I selected it I want to draw a lasso around an area that I think can be could be helped for lack of a better term when I go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, then notice how it changed the way all of those, the, the kind of blotchy parts of her skin showed, and it's got pure texture, and but they've all blended together at about 19. I mean, we can go further with it, we can go up to 33, but I wouldn't. Um, I try to keep the number as low as possible and still same have the same effect so I'll hold command D and that's deselect and it looks pretty good so let's let's zoom into a hundred percent of to her cheek here okay now right here we select the whole thing again feathered at 40 is going to be very helpful because it will not show real harsh mark by her nose or her eyes it's where we should select it I think the same one would probably work so we'll just click here Gaussian blur or command F it will replicate what we just did 
because I want this one and this one to look the same, have the same texture. Command D, deselect. And then I come over here. And then I'm going OK. I don't want to mess with the mole right now. That will be later. At a different later on a different layer for that matter. Command F will repeat what I did on the others. Then we bring this down. Select a little bit more than a nose so that you can actually get the nose. When it feathers, it shrinks, as you've noticed probably. And Command F and say, yeah, you know, the white spots are, are not all that bad now. They look natural versus um, a real blotchy white spots or blotchy red spots. Those are what you want to get rid of. And that's what the frequency separation technique does. Command F. And Command F. And Command D. Okay, I have pretty much what I was going for on the skin part. So, what's my next step? Well, I want to take care of things like this. Any kind of other marks that I may want to deal with that are were not dealt with as images, uh, or that were not taken care of by this process. So I go to texture layer, and then I take something over here, either my patch tool, which I absolutely love using, or the spot healing. Notice how spot healing works. Now, to bring it down, use your brackets that are right next to the P on your keyboard. The left bracket brings the sizes down, the right one brings it up. So if I do a, a tiny swipe, it's gone. It will not leave the mark that normally the healing leaves because of the previous things that we've done. It will not do that. All of the previous steps have taken care of that. It's a few marks here and there. Right here there's a kind of interesting skin item. Don't know what it is. This I'm not too sure what to, how to mess with it. I'm not sure what it is. That just looks like a uncut eyebrow, untrimmed, whatever, unplucked. And so after I go through all these and I just pick and choose what I want to mess with, if I want to make her look like she gets enough sleep, I can do that. And then I'm pretty much finished with the face um, when it comes to this aspect. Still a little bit bright right here, but we're going to be okay with that. Now let's zoom out. I'll look at it. Command minus. Now, we are almost to the image that we saw as the after. So I'm going to go back to my selector over here to the upper right hand, left hand corner of your tools and let's do a com alt command shift E so I hold my alt command shift down then I press E one time and what I've done is it, it combines base and texture and makes it into one well that's my one well what I want to do with that one is I want to make it equivalent to my training base down here. So I will not really do anything to it. I will make a double of it. So if you recall that was command J. And I like to rename mine but in this case I won't. You can do whatever you know um, feels perfect for you. So what I want to do is a little bit of a, um, a color 
settings that will make a difference in the picture if you will so down here in my um, adjustment layers I want to hold my alt key down alt then I click on the adjustment layer and I let go of my alt key and then and I'll explain what the alt key does for me and I want to go to selective colors my alt key says do you want to apply this change to everything like everything here or just the, this one layer below it or just here I just want to only there use the previous layer to create clipping mask so okay check and then okay so it's created a clipping mask so that whatever I do here I've got my neutral color selected which is what I normally do that's why it's at neutral um, I believe reds is your default I go to neutral and then on neutral and magenta I kind of play with it a little bit that's a little bit too much so I take my yellow and drag it over as well now her hair is more golden but magenta is a little bit too strong still in my for my taste at least um, and then let's say blacks are to darken our background and how cyan work with us here about right there now you can play with these colors and go further uh, in either direction I mean you can go here but I wouldn't um, it's just me I'm just not totally for the green people I just um, and I don't want it to look too unnatural of course and I think green just might do that okay so we have this one our selective colors we've changed the color look so we do alt command shift E again and it makes that one so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this layer and hold my shift key down and go to base what I want to do is I want to go to layers new group from layers and I'll just call this grouped there here's why I want to do this it's because if I ever want to look at the difference I could I click on this eye before after before after I can see okay her original clothes her, her her sweater was greenish but now it's brown um, however I'm very pleased with the appearance so I hope this comes in handy and is very helpful for you in trying to accomplish similar things in um, in your photos at least for the skin now let's go to this, this layer and let's do one last thing again when I have a when I have a top layer that I've made a command shift E com, alt command shift E and created this I want to make this my base again uh, or just I'll just call it my base um, original a ridge and command J to duplicate it the reason I keep duplicating is because if I mess this one up on this layer I can right click and delete it where I, and then go back to my original and duplicate it again if I want to or just say no nah, I just don't want to do that this one I'm gonna name hair because what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight her hair in some places that are does not look too unnatural because as you know she already has as you can see she already has streaks that are that's the norm for her look anyway but I want to bring out some brightness in it so on my blending layer notice I'm still on here I go to normal and I drop it down to screen and watch this watch what looks what happens to her face whoa 
too much, right? Well, if you hold your Alt key down and you clip, click on Add Layer Mask, she goes back to natural. But what you've done is you've put a black mask on versus a white one. The normal mask that you've been seeing is a white one. Well, if it's a black one, that means we have to paint it with white in order to get what we want. So notice your colors over here are black and white. If you need to flip them, hit X. Watch, see, observe. Black's the front, white's the front, black's the front, X. And it's a toggle. It just goes back and forth. So I want white. And I press B to get the brush. Okay, I've got the brush and I've got it down to 21% opacity. I want to raise it a little bit, maybe up to 25. Um, we don't want too high of an opacity. But however, I do want my brush to be a little bit bigger. So remember the brackets beside the letters, the letter P. Okay, the far right one, the right bracket does that. I don't want it to be too obvious. That's why I've got it down at a low number on opacity. But that's also why I have a bigger brush. That little that little swipe does this. And I'm going to bring the brush down a little bit. I don't want to accidentally paint the background because then everybody knows that what you did. Now, often times, even my clients do not know I've done it. They just think I've that whatever lighting I did just made their hair look gorgeous. Um, Now, I've accidentally painted the background there, so I'm Command Z to get that away. So, I'll re and every once in a while, let go of your mouse so that when you do a Command Z, you don't undo everything you've done. 